Pleasure to see you all. Thank you for coming. So, um, yeah, as we get started here, I'll just let you know my name is Catherine Mandel, and I've been working for the last two years for <coughs> the CDC Design Center for Sustainability. So that's where I've been acquiring my knowledge, and, and I also did a rough calculation today. Conservative estimate that I've spent <coughs> probably 500 hours of my life riding the D-Line. <laughs> so I think uh, while I'm here today to talk specifically about the Broadway corridor, I think it's really important to establish an understanding of the corridor as just one part of the larger ecosystem of the city that we need to be concerned about. Perspective, as yeah. we also got from Eric. Uh, street car service in Vancouver began on the 28th of June of 1890, and street cars ran all downtown to the w in the West End to Stanley Park, through Gastown, Chinatown, up Commercial Drive, point through to Point Grey and Kitsilano on West 4th, through Carisdale, and in South Vancouver, up Oak Street and Ontario Street and Fraser as well as north, south, up Main Street, where we are right now. And uh, as you see, the neighborhoods that we live in were born out of the urban form that was facilitated by the streetcar. So development in Vancouver proceeded alongside streetcar traffic to the north. Um, and if you go to the next slide. So this was taken in the 1950s. This is under the Burrard Street Bridge, where all of the streetcars were burned. And they were replaced with the trolley buses that we have now, and also the increased market share of the private vehicle. Now, uh, this is pretty contentious there. Uh, although the although GM wasn't specifically charged for this, there are great proven speculations that uh, conspiracy by various big car companies led to the destruction of the streetcar system in Vancouver. But luckily, we're still left with this urban form that has us uh, with grid, uh, grid, a grid street network that is very interconnected and has kind of the spread out density that we see right now. Um, next slide, please. So these are the new iterations of that technology that we once had. Uh, next slide. So these are kind of the three aims that you can address by looking at this transportation technology. Um, and the first one, next slide, is, as Eric also went over really well, uh, climate change. So BC is aiming to reduce emissions by 33% by 2020, and electrifying the transit grid is necessary to accomplish that. Next slide. Again, you can see this great figure showing us how much our transportation impacts our emissions. also a great form of transportation, but looking at also the difference in emissions between a streetcar and a trolley bus, so you can see again the benefits of this light rail technology. Uh, next slide. And yeah, just a little bit here compared to the 
energy and filters construction of the skyscrapes to retire all the cement and pieces uh, is quite a large amount of emissions that's been that process as well. Next slide. Okay, so this is this is Broadway, and what are we going to do with Broadway? There's so much growth projected for the region. Um, I think it's really important to mention that first of all the limited funding that's possible from the federal and provincial governments, that we only have a pot of money that has to be distributed across the entire region. And right now the estimates for the Broadway Skyplane Fund, Skyplane run are $3 billion. Um, and as, as we stand right now, and this is information that uh, just came out of the bus drivers union as well, that right now service cuts to transit have resulted in a lack of at least 500 buses, so 500 buses fewer than we need, which is likely closer to 750 buses missing from service right now. And I know that a lot of people that I've spoken to in the last few weeks have experienced long waits and like big problems being passed up by the 19 and by the 8 and just like waiting as buses get stuck behind each other. And, and the service is already over capacity across <coughs> the region, uh, not just on Broadway. And this is a problem also in the greater region in Delta and in Latimer, where service is, is still in, in crucial need. So in the face of these service cuts and transit expecting to have to cut more services, uh, can we justify the subway? Should we put the dream of UBC and the Broadway corridor as a global technology center and, and medical technology center? Or do we support a greater diversity of citizens neighborhoods and their needs. Uh, next slide. So that same $3 billion that could be spent on one skyplane run of 12 kilometers could potentially be applied as a whole network of streetcar lines across the city. Um, we have run right back to that first list that I read off to you of where the streetcar once ran connecting disparate points across the city for an Omega. Um, and how does this, oh, this is ours. Yeah, one, one of the central reasons for <coughs> light rail, which I think is really shown in this image, is that it promotes a different way of moving around the city, where a sky train might lead people to leave one extreme point and go to point B far across the city, light rail, facilitates a more interconnected way of traveling and accessing services along the route. Um, and part of this is also expressed in the development that happens along these two different kinds of systems. So where the subway, uh, next slide. Maybe, oh, this is this one. Oh yeah, yeah, so this is what we're doing with here, the, where the subway station would lead to this like dense, concentration of big box stores um, like at Candy and Broadway. Uh, next slide. Or at Metro Town. Um, light rail. Next slide. Light rail along Broadway and throughout the city promotes uh, like the diffusion of density across longer stretches of our core arteries. So to promote a smaller scale of building we call more human scale of building that could be more energy across the city region and not just at peak and low. Next slide. Where is the taxpayer? So this is actually what I have mostly been focusing on in my research for the past two years, just the cost. <laughs> um, so next slide. I needed these numbers in big and bold, but I didn't have them, so I'm just gonna say them really clearly. <laughs> so you can see here the cost per kilometer. This is uh, the research I've been doing most recently, which was comparing international light rail systems. So similar to what we would be looking for in Vancouver on the street, uh, separate, separated from traffic um, and, and quite light, but high capacity. And you can see that we have costs of from 12 million per kilometer to something around 30 or 40 million per kilometer as we get higher up in cost. 
but kind of an average of around 20, 25 million per kilometer. That's in comparison to the Skyplane, which is proposed for Broadway, which has an estimated cost of $250 million per kilometer. So that's 10 times more expensive. Um, 